Goedag, well, I'm dead. My name is Wildcard. Welcome back to my channel. So, the Rugby World Cup warm up is underway. This time, in Buenos Aires, Argentina versus the Springboks. Two away jerseys, for some reason, in this match. <laughs> that, that green slash blue Springbok away jersey is the ugliest thing I have ever seen on a rugby field, okay? Please get rid of it. Please don't wear that at the Rugby World Cup because with Ireland in, this, in the same pool, uh, Springboks probably going to have to wear the away jersey at some point in the Rugby World Cup. So yes, please don't wear it. And uh, that was, you know, aside from the extremely ugly jersey, this was actually a pretty good performance by the Springboks, especially in the second half. The Argentina uh, attack was completely shut out by the rush defense of the Springboks team. It was unbelievably impressive. Like, that is what you need to win Rugby World Cup with just world-class defense like that. To be able to, you know, gain meters with your defense is just in itself a very, very special weapon to employ by any international test team. And the Springboks did that absolutely perfectly this game. They completely shut out Santiago Carrera's attacking game and forcing errors out of him and just really putting them out of the, any sort of attacking options that the Argentinians wanted to play and forcing the Argentinians to play the kicking game. And the Springboks, you know, world-renowned for the kicking game, was able to quite happily to comply and, yeah, come out with a very comfortable win, 24 points to 13. Uh, going to this game, I actually thought the Springboks was going to struggle this game, considering this was, again, the B team that the Springboks has um, proposed to go up against a pretty strong Argentina team in Buenos Aires away. And uh, yeah, the, the first half looked pretty quiet for for the Springboks. The, the man in the box goal kicking has been pretty poor this game. And especially, you know, cons considering the Springboks really, really needed him to be a reliable goal kicker. He surely had a lot of goal kicking practice this game. Missed a few quite easy ones. Uh, and, and it was looking quite concerning that the Springboks might lose this game as a result of poor kicking. Poor, cold, poor goal kicking. But yeah, really able to get themselves together in the second half. And, you know, with those dominance in the four pack, getting those breakdowns, getting those penalties, and uh, especially, you know, Dion Fleury and Jasper Visa, it's tremendous performance uh, in this game. Uh, Dion Fleury was probably having the best day of his life today. He debuted for the Springboks at 35 years of age. He's currently 36. And he was the vice captain. So when Bungi Bunabi went off the field, he was handed the captaincy of the Springboks in the second half. So he was literally dreaming about this day, right? I have absolutely no doubt he was dreaming about captaining the Springboks since like three years old, right? And he's finally fulfilled his dream to captain the Springboks in the most ugliest Springbok jersey in history. But hey, Congratulations, man. You are, you are truly, truly one of the greatest South African rugby players of all time, okay? I, I'm very, very happy for you. And this is, you know, to come out with a win as well uh, in, in such, a, such a circumstance is really, um, like he did tremendously work at the breakdowns. Just, just absolute, absolute amount of the match for me. It's De Jong Fari. And so with the goods out of the way, let's talk about the box goal kicking. How many goals did he actually miss this game? He missed. He got five out of nine. So barely over 50%. It was at one point uh, as low as 30%. At one point, he was missing right in front. Uh, so that's the bad news for the, for, for, the, for the spring box. But the good news is they keep going. They gave him a lot of goal kicking practice. Eventually, late in the second half, he was able to get himself back on track and uh, getting those goal in, something that Rassi Rasmus and his coaching staff would be really happy to see for him. So that is another tick for the Springboks, getting that goal kick, uh, getting getting the goal kicker more time for goal kicks. Uh, but they do also have two tries as well, came in in the second half. And yeah, just really um, able to show a lot of versatility as well. That crossfield kick from Manny Lebok. Uh, they, they tried that multiple times this game. 
did pay off to a to a try for for Kane and Moody. And uh, yeah, overall, I thought this was much better than I was expecting. Damien Valimsa, really good under the high ball. Uh, again, and, and Marco Zulema, Pimbi as well. They did this again and again and again. The box kick, uh, the box kick to exit their own half. And Marco Zulema, Pimpi was able to turn over the ball or force a uh, turnover at the breakdown immediately following these box kicks. It was just huge, huge, huge turnarounds for the spring box and leaving the Argentinians really um, out of ideas for most part of the game due to this very, very efficient high ball turnover uh, by the spring box. So overall... The stat says for itself, the Springboks dominated the, the game 560 run meters to Argentina's 131. Like the meters will have to be neg probably negative. The Argentinian run meters is probably negative because of how how much of the Springboks defense has pushed them back, right? So the, the, the Argentinians were literally losing territory every time they ran the ball. They had 79 carries. So yeah, only 133 run meters. Like that is extremely bad. And it's just purely to the credit of the Springboks' rush defense. Nine turnovers conceded for both teams. And then the Argentinians had to make 163 tackles, 27 missed tackles. The Springboks, 87 tackles, 20 missed tackles themselves. So that's probably a bit high for the Springboks to their likings. But it's the effectiveness of the tackle that is really, really, really just... I cannot believe how good that is. Like, that is world-class, World Cup winning defense out there tonight for the Springboks. Kicks in play, 19 for the Argentinians, and the Springboks obviously dominated the kicking game with the with those high balls and re, and, and you know retention rate uh, with both them, Damian Valencia and Marco Zulma Pimpi especially getting those ball back. 27 kicks for the Springboks. Uh, the goal kicking, like I said, bit lacking, but good news is this: uh, he's got a plenty of practice going into the Rugby World Cup. Uh, man in the box lineouts, I thought was quite even for both teams. The Argent, there was a few penalties. Uh, for both teams, for early, like, just technical penalties. Argentina had, like, a blocking penalty, a few technical issues for early engagements. But the lineouts themselves was pretty good overall. I thought, like, like I, I guess it was, like, decent overall. But it's the follow-up, the, the more, uh, the, the spring box more was much more competitive. The spring box more defense was much better. And uh, the Argentinian more was just really didn't didn't go anywhere uh, following the lineouts. The scrums... I thought was pretty even overall. I, th I think both teams were penalized at points for slipping, uh, for slipping. But I think the Springboks scrum may have a bit more dominance in the second half uh, over the Argentinians. Penalty count, this is a pretty high for both teams. 14 penalties conceded for the Springboks. Uh, sorry, for Argentina. 13 for the Springboks. There was one yellow card to Franco Mostert, who was sent off due to, I guess, so yeah, he will put a late shot on... Um, from he put a lay shot on Santiago Carreras after the referee had issued a warning for for like foul play essentially. So that was a bit unfortunate for him to receive that yellow card. So yeah, really not much to talk about. This was a lot of goal kicking, uh, and a lot of kicking game for for the lot lot of goal kicking and a lot of kicking game for for the Springboks. But the Earlier in the game, Argentina was able to get some front foot momentum, some really, some was giving a bit of a space to work with, essentially. And that really giving the Springboks a bit of trouble early on. Argentina was again and again stifled at the breakdown, the Springboks committing a lot of people to the breakdown early in the game. But eventually, Argentina was able to get uh, some sustained pressure in the Springbok 22. There was a penalty. So this was, uh, there was, a, I think it was a, uh, there was a more, I think it was a penalty for the more. And then Betrinol, the number nine, takes a quick tap and he runs in. He almost got tackled by Dion Fury and then goes in for the try. So it was really interesting at this point here as well. Dion Fury was in an offside position when he made contact with Betrinol. If he had actually made the tackle and saved the try, it would have been a penalty try and a yellow card. So it was quite lucky that Dion Fury didn't make the tackle and Betrinol uh, went in for the try. Because Dion Fury was in a very blatant, obvious offside position uh, when Betrinol took the quick tap. So luckily, he, he, he failed the tackle. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's a bit of a dicey situation there. So that was the only opportunity Argentina had to get in their first try on the ball. Uh, second half, the, the spring box was looking really flat in the first half. They only had one penalty goal, I think it was. Uh, or I think it was they trailing, I think it was 10 points to three at halftime, the spring box was. 
And second half, immediately come out of the gate, the Springboks was looking a lot more dominant. They had basically made some changes. Jesse Creel came onto the field and then immediately made an impact. I think Jesse Creel was put on the field at halftime. Basically, he got the ball, a massive injection of speed and just energy. There was uh, basically like a center field ball where he had, he crashed through the defense and was able to op- get his hand free, make a little offload to Damon Valimsa. Damon Valimsa runs free and then sees that his wingman, Marco Zulu Mapingpi, was on the wing, pops the ball over and allowed the, the speedster to finish the game, uh, finish the, the, the try into the corner for the Springboks uh, immediately in the second half. And then a few minutes later, Springboks was once again putting pressure into the Argentina um, Argentina 22 and there was a penalty and then immediately Manny Leboc, they did this thing where Leboc was running a, a decoy, essentially it was a decoy runner. He was like running behind uh, one of the balls receivers and he gets the ball popped to him and he just cross field kick. Pinpoint accuracy straight to Kane and Moody's uh, chest. Goes in, easy as that for the second try for the Springboks. Bang, bang, Springboks gets some two tries on the ball. And after the two tries were scored, uh, the Springboks was, you know, just really using their rush defense, pressuring the breakdown, getting a lot of penalties, and then <laughs> only for uh, for a man in the box to miss a lot of them before finally, late in the second half, he was able to start to get his confidence back, starting to slowly chipping the ball over and getting the scoreboard ticking ahead uh, over the Argentinians. Uh, the final score, the... Springboks won 24 points to 13. Again, Dion Fury's performance in this game was so, so, so impressive. I do feel like he's going to, yeah, he, he definitely deserved, probably deserves a spot in the Springbok team. Is considering that his utility as a hooker as well brings that additional security. Uh, should something happen to, the, you know, you only got to bring two hookers to the Rugby World Cup. Should anything happen, he's going to be the third hooker as well. So, yeah, really, really impressive performance. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I do appreciate you watching all my content. And have a good day. And uh, see you guys next week for the rugby news. Cheers.